So now what I did was I smoothed this transition out between this chord tone and this non-chord tone. Remember, this is in the first chord. I play this when we go to the next chord, which is dissonant. And we started off with this big tension up here. So there, I went from G. This note is out of key totally. Totally out of key. Sounds like crap when you play it by itself. Okay? Nasty. Okay? But being bent allows me now to have that descending vocal style to get into the F sharp. Okay? So we're combining some of the different ideas here, and that effect is always going to be the same. Okay, one more time. That was the third again, five to three. I use the vocal thing again, coming down to two to one. Put into exact emotional words. It, it, it sounds very uh, isolated, very uh, longing for something, very lonely. Play it again. for the vibrato, then on the next beat, smack the note again and apply the vibrato on a bent note really wide. Because it's more dramatic than hitting the vibrato from the beginning. Play, play again, please. Isn't that more dramatic than this? It's not as cool. It's cool, but it's, it doesn't grab you the same way that holding the vibrato off does. That just grips your throat. A lot of the same ideas so you can hear them over and over again okay anyway the, the the main point is that these thoughts that I have are removed they've, they've just been eliminated over long periods of time by going through and not having to think about it and the way I would get to that point is asking myself either how do I recreate this and then how do we recreate it all the time and what do I have to do right now to get that sound? And you start memorizing what different feelings sound like and be able to identify them. And that brings up a very special point about music theory. You know, music th people misunderstand what music theory is. Uh, there are those who know nothing, and they think that music theory is just a bunch of set of rules that restrict you. 
that, that couldn't be further from the truth. And then there is the vast majority of other people who do know something about music theory, and they think that music theory is a way to, uh, to, to organize music or to explain things or used for uh, analyzing pieces of music where you can see how things are put together. And that's how it's generally taught uh, in colleges and universities. Okay, that's the way I learned it. But if you really think about it, on a very deep level, music theory is a really, uh, at more advanced level, is about understanding what you're hearing and why that creates the emotion that it does. It's not about what chords are in what key and what Roman numeral is this and what kind of modulation is this. That's the, that's the nuts and bolts stuff that you learn when you're a student, you know, when you go to school or, or, or take lessons or whatever. But really, music theory, on a very deep level, is to understand that if you're playing this chord, what is the most dramatic single pitch you could possibly play over that chord? And what does it sound like? And where is it? That's, that's music theory beyond anything you're going to find in, in most books, to really know that. Music theory of understanding that if I manipulate the half steps above every chord tone, or below every chord tone, that's going to create lots and lots of tension. And if you resolve that tension in a variety of certain ways, each one of those different ways can be explained. We can, there's nothing that you can play that music theory can't explain. And when you understand that and know what those things are, then you can recreate that any time that you want. You can recreate any emotion that you want any time that you want. So for example, composers who wanted to Here's a good example. Composers who wanted to um, have a feeling of lament often would make bass lines descend downwards, either chromatically using you know, modulations or uh, notes out of the key, or stepwise through the key. Okay? Beethoven used this all the time. Chopin used it all the time. This descending, crawling down as chord changed on top that's associated with feeling of lament, okay? Um, so if you, if you know that, and you understand base, the basic ideas of how that works, when you want to create a lament feeling using just the bass line and putting other things on top of it, you can instantly go right to that. It doesn't mean that that might be the only thing that you would use, but if you want to instantly create that sound and you understand, you have this memorized, then that's one way how to do it. Does that make sense? Okay, so... Music theory has got to go eventually beyond, I mean, your understanding of it should go beyond this, these are the notes, these are the keys, these are the key signatures, these are the chords, you know. You get past all of that and understanding this emotion is caused by doing that, that, or that. This emotion is caused in this context by doing this. But in this context, if you do that, if it, but in that context, if you do that same thing, it doesn't cause that same feeling. It's just like if you play an E note over an E minor chord, it has a certain feeling. If you play that same E note over a C chord, that E note doesn't sound anything like what it did in the first case, even though it's exactly the same pitch. Make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So now you got a big, big, long answer to your question. <laughs>